everybody, Caleb here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Today I've got this Martin HD35, and it's a real nice guitar. It's got a couple of problems. It's kind of like the last nice Martin I looked at. The back binding is coming loose, you can see. It's coming loose on both sides. Um, it's much worse on this side, so we'll take care of that. Uh, one other thing is this strap button here is not really in the best location. Sometimes they stick it here, but it would work a lot better if it were on this side. It holds your strap a little bit better and it's wrapped around the neck. So we'll move that. And then besides that, it just needs a little bit of a setup. And really, it's not doing too bad as it is. So, you know, it shouldn't be too much work. great sound. I really do enjoy this one. This one already plays really well and sounds really good. We're going to be hard pressed to do any better than it already is, but we'll give it our shot. So I think the first thing we'll do is we'll start on the binding. So I'll set it down and we can take a look at how we're going to attack this. So since we're starting on the binding, I've been taking a look at it and I think what we need to do, especially on this side, is kind of clean it out a little bit. So I've got my pointed X-Acto knife and I'm just going to work with the back of it to take out any old glue that's preventing it from closing all the way. I can see there's some some stuff, especially on this side, and I almost wonder if somebody else hasn't already tried to fix this once. Here maybe you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'll try to get it where I can show you. I'll have to do a little left-handed. So I'm just working the blade in and it just falls right in. I'm not pushing very hard. I'm just trying to clean out any of the junk. This will help me glue this back cleaner. So I'll keep at this for a little bit, and then I'll go to the other side and do it as well. And that will give me a cleaner joint for when I glue this back together. Alright, so now I've got both sides cleaned up, and this side is loose. I mean, it's really loose. But um, the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use the heat gun. And it's turned all the way down, so it's not as dangerous as you might think it is. And I'm going to try to soften the plastic a little bit. Just get it a little warm, will help it bend. Alright, that'll work pretty good. I'll try to hit the other side as well. Alright, now real quick, we're going to put some canopy glue in there. We're going to tape it up. This canopy glue works really good for plastic to wood and it's water cleanup. So I'll get the binding tape out. I'm going to get a damp cloth to help me clean some of this glue up. The, uh, the other nice thing about this canopy glue is if I don't totally get it all cleaned up it gets really rubbery and it doesn't really stick to the finish so you can kind of just scrape it off with a plastic pick. I'm working my way in towards the waist where I'm going to want to have the most play and even then I kind of doubt I'm going to get any because that's where it's the tightest looking like I might get lucky. Alright, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to clamp this at the waist both sides. So I'm going to get some glue in this side. So 
So I think it's going to close up pretty good. Um, we'll give this some time to set up. Canopy glue doesn't take too long to set up, but it should take some good time, or a little bit of time, to make sure everything's going to stay right where it is. That's where it looks the best. So we'll come back to this after a little while. Well, this Martin's had plenty of time to set up and dry. And you can see I've got all the tape off. And what I'm doing now is I'm going back through with a, a damp towel and rubbing down the area where some might have squeezed out some of the glue. And then I'm taking a pick. And this is just, just a pick I picked up. Um, it's a medium pick, doesn't really say the size, and it doesn't matter much. And I'm just kind of scraping any glue off. It's not going to hurt the finish. So you can see I've removed the strap button from its previous location. What I did was I went ahead and just took a little piece of white plastic, was probably uh, meant for side dots, but I just shoved it in there, glued it in there, cut it off flush, make sure everything fit well, and now that fills that hole. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is actually get this fit in its new location. So I've done this a couple of times before, but usually on much larger neck heels. Um, you know, this Martin has a fairly small heel. I might want to ask Jerry where he thinks is the best spot for this. It goes over here somewhere. It's kind of hard for you to see where I'm putting it. But, um, you know, the wear isn't exact. It just really needs to go on this side of the heel. That way the strap wraps around the heel. And it holds it a little more securely. So... I think I'm going to ask Jerry what he thinks is the best spot for this, and that's where I'll put it. Got a little piece of tape on here, and there's a little pencil mark right where I'm going to put this. And I've also put a little piece of tape on the drill bit to give me a good depth. So I'm going to go ahead and just try it. Ta-da! Only one hole. So I'd say that's a success. Well, I've run into another spot where the binding is loose on the fretboard this time. You can probably see it right there. It's also loose up by the first fret on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and get the glue back out and the binding tape back out and I'll glue this down as well. This guitar has had no shortage of loose binding, that's for sure. So now that our frets are cleaned up and the binding is reattached, I'm going to use some of this Be Good wood oil on the fretboard and the bridge just because we like to use it on all the raw wood surfaces. Um, no, that saddle does not want to come out, so I'll leave it in there. Give this a little shake, make sure it's good mixed. Now I'll come back with a clean one, take off any excess. Alright, now I think we're ready to talk about strings. So I've got some strings. Uh, I've got the Diodario Phosphor Bronze EJ16s. These are the 12 to 53, the lights. Um, I think this will be a good set for this. And something else worth mentioning is this guitar has locking tuners, which is a little unusual for acoustic guitars, but it does make my job a whole lot easier in stringing this up. I'll try to show you how that works in case you haven't seen them before. So we'll start with our E string, bass E string. So now that the bass E string is being held at the bridge, all I have to do is make sure this is loose and then push it through the hole. I can pull it tight, and then as I tighten this down, it 
it uh, pushes a little pin towards the bottom that holds the string inside the post. So this way there's no extra wrapping needed. I'm already building tension. And I can also just go ahead and cut these off really quick. All right, now we'll move on. These definitely work a little bit easier if you get the hole pointing towards the neck or towards the fretboard, towards the bridge. Because this way you can just pull straight, tighten it down. There we go. I can trim them off. This helps a lot on the, uh, the treble strings where you're worried about them slipping because the uh, locking portion won't allow them to slip through the hole so you don't have to wind as much. And in general, less windings is better for your tuning because there's less wraps on the peg to get stuck on. Just finishing up getting this tuned. And I've mentioned this before, but it's so nice to have tuners that just work. No random jumps. They just, they turn and they tune. I got a feeling the action's just a little low. And since I haven't touched it, must have been low before I started. We'll check it right now. Got the little taper gauge. Barely getting 40 thousandths on the treble side and like 70 thousandths on the bass side. So it's, it's really low. That's at the 12th fret. Which is kind of odd. I've, I've played this a little bit before I changed strings on the old strings and it didn't seem to buzz at all. And really this one isn't too bad. It's just really close. And I guess if you don't play it that hard it's not that bad. I'll see what Jerry thinks. So yeah, I'll see what Jerry thinks. It's really low, but that may not be that big of a problem. We'll see. Well, after looking at it for a little bit more, I've decided that, that saddle's just not gonna work. So, it's gonna have to get a taller saddle, and I don't wanna shim it. So I'm just gonna make a new one, and I'll put that one in the case, and if the customer decides that 
you don't like the new saddle, then put the old one back in. So there's the old saddle, and it's, uh, I'm going to say that it's probably bone. Uh, looking at the way it's changed color and feel. I don't think it's plastic. So we'll make a new one that fits in the slot and is taller and then I'll work my way back from there. So I got a new antler saddle in here and it's sitting really tall. Well I think it's really tall. It's maybe not actually all that tall. But I'm going to get this back up to pitch now. We can see where the action is then. And to be totally honest with you, the saddle I picked was a saddle somebody had made for another guitar that maybe didn't end up fitting, maybe it ended up too small for that one. a little bit bigger than this one so it fit pretty good. It was longer than this one needed so I went ahead and took the ends down but thickness wise it was just a little bit thicker than I needed so it didn't take much. So I'm going to assume that the action is probably pretty close just barely 90 thousandths, so that's good. 75, which is good. So that's really good on both ends. So that's good. The one thing I still need to do is round the edges of this saddle off. They're a little sharp yet. So I've got my little file here and I'm just rounding these edges off. Makes it a little bit more comfortable to play. You ain't gonna worry about them. That's a lot better. Well, I think this Martin's ready to go. Um, you know, we did a little bit of work to this, getting this binding restuck down. I've gone through and tried to clean it up a little bit, making sure there's no smudges or anything. Uh, we moved that strap button to there from the back here, where it doesn't make a whole lot of sense here. It does a lot better there. And it's got a new saddle now, which raises the height up to, uh, like just the right height. This is probably one of the more enjoyable instruments we've had to play in a while. It sounds good and it feels real good to play too. I think it's a really good sound of Martin. I hope you enjoyed watching our little repair and setup to this. If you did a thumbs up is much appreciated and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.